You are watching Science of the Saints on Catholic Family Podcast. This episode is on the virtue of punctuality. I'm late. I'm late. For a very important date. No time to say hello. Goodbye. I'm late. I'm late. I'm late. Hurry up. We're going to be late. I am sure we have all heard that phrase many times from our mothers. It is an extremely universal sentiment. Do not make me late. This sense of urgency. Get your stuff together and get in the car now. Whatever happens, we cannot be late. On a purely natural level, no one likes to be kept waiting. Waiting is a stalemate, like being frozen in time. We cannot proceed because we are missing elements necessary to continue forward. A lot of our life is spent in necessary waiting. We wait nine months for a baby, or all day for a repairman, or four hours in an emergency room. So there are many times in our lives where we expect to have to wait. And even though we understand that we must wait, very few people can handle it well. After all, the ability to wait is also a virtue. So let us consider, hmm, if we live in a world without virtue, how well are people on a natural level going to be capable of waiting gracefully? They simply are not. So if they cannot handle expected waiting, what about the unexpected waiting? The waiting that happens because someone else is late. Oops, I'm 15 minutes late. Even before we have begun whatever task we have already riled another party by our inability to be punctual and have left someone hanging in time, frozen, waiting on us for the ability to proceed. So it becomes a double whammy. Not only are we taking hits to our spiritual armor because of our own ability to practice the virtue of punctuality, but we are also taking hits because of the fire we have ignited in the person we have kept waiting. We have directly been the cause of someone's frustration or anger, and this is never a good thing for us. St. Teresa the Little Flower, the Saint of the Little Way, tells us that the road to sanctity is in the little things, and for most of us, I would say that punctuality does rather seem like a little thing. Is it really that big of a deal when I'm 15 minutes late? It's not like I killed anyone or anything. And yes, you would be correct, being late is not a mortal sin, generally not even a venial sin. 15 minutes late to an appointment or meeting up with someone does not have the power to send you to hell. And for most of us, it doesn't even make its way into a confessional. It is barely even a thought of consideration in our head. We are generally not even overly concerned that we have been late. But let us look deep into the science, the science of virtue over vice, because just as Newton's third law states in science that for every action, force, in nature, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So the virtues and vices work similar. For every virtue, there is an equal and opposite vice. And if we are not practicing the virtue, That means in an indirect way, we are practicing the vice. Punctuality is a manifestation of obedience, which falls under the cardinal virtue of justice. So we need to take our investigation right back to its roots. Justice. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after justice, for they shall have their fill. Justice is a social virtue. It has us giving to God and to our fellow brethren what is right and what is due to them. Our goals and our guides catechism tells us, quote, So justice gives us the inclination and the facility to act constantly, 
permanently, promptly, and easily toward the performance of those actions which we give to all men what is rightfully theirs. End quote. So in other words, the virtue of justice gives to us the sensitivity necessary to realize when we are treading on our neighbor and to act rightly without hesitation. Pope Leo XIII said that, quote, Peace is built on the foundation of justice. End quote. And just think, people of the world have been praying for world peace forever. If only we could tell them, in order for peace to happen, all men must give to God and their neighbor what is rightfully due to them. You cannot have peace without it. So if the virtue of justice is the foundation of peace, and every virtue has an opposing vice, to understand this better, we need to know what the opposite of justice is. The opposite sin to justice is greed. And greed is manifested in the vices of treachery, betrayal, fraud, which is deception or cheating others, deceitfulness, perjury, restlessness, insensitivity towards other, lack of mercy, deceit, lying, stealing, injustice, just to name a few. Well, that does shed a different light on promptness. If I am not participating in the virtue, then I am contributing to the vice? The vice that particularly stands out in regards to punctuality is insensitivity towards others. Because as we stated at the beginning, when you are late, you are generally putting someone or many people out. You have indeed ruffled feathers before you have even arrived. So what about our average little lates? Here and there, they are rarely deliberate. It is true, we do not consciously decide to upset the whole universe by not getting out the door on time. We are certainly not deliberately lying, stealing, etc. We just couldn't get ourselves ready in time. Little, or sometimes big, things took us away. It certainly wasn't an act of will to do harm. After all, we usually don't even have to confess these things. So why should I worry about it? Because as Catholics, we have a role to play. We do have a mission to do the will of God, save our soul, and bring others to God. While God's grace in the world is spread through the habitual practice of virtue, the more we pray, the more we go to Mass, the more we practice charity and all the virtues, the more we contribute to making the world a better place and help with the conversion of souls. It is simple science, the more good we put in, the more God's grace flows. If we make habitual vice our norm, we are contributing to chaos. We are stopping the flow of God's grace. And there can be no doubt that the result of being late is always chaos. It is exactly as the Catechism tells us. For peace we must give to a man what is rightfully his. And in this case, that's time. Time is a very precious gift. Once we have used it, we can never take it back. We never know exactly how much time will be given to us before we die. And when we die, God will ask us to give an account of our time. Were we able to manage our time well? And were we considerate of other people's time? By coming in late, we cause disruption and distraction to those around us. And when we keep people waiting, we are misusing other people's time. The ability to be prompt also defines our character as a person. It goes hand in hand with all the other virtues found under the title of justice. Courtesy, uprightness, reliability, responsibility, and order. If we are perpetually late, we are indirectly telling everyone we are none of the above. We are not that person who can be relied on. We should first off, as in all things, do a thorough examination of conscience. Am I late the odd time? 
because God's will does often make us late over things we cannot control? Or am I a habitually late person? Are my lates the will of God or are they my own doing? And we need to be honest with this examination. Remember, as we know from episode 1 on confidence, being aware of our faults is what strengthens and gives us confidence. It is not to our benefit to make excuses for ourselves. We must learn to be committed to our word. We must be able to drop whatever is going on to perform the preparation time needed to make our word be true. Am I even giving myself enough preparation time? Examination of conscience. How do I keep messing this up? And of course, prayer. No virtue is ever attained without prayer. And just a word of practical application. People who are always on time are so because they are not striving to be on time. They are striving to be half an hour early. Better that they should wait than they should keep someone else waiting. And thus, they always leave themselves a half hour buffer for the things that are to go wrong. And if things do go wrong, then they have given themselves a window to still be on time. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. If doing this one small thing removes chaos and brings peace, takes away vice and adds virtue, then how can we not make it our goal to always be on time? Let us imitate St. Teresa and her little way by doing the little things well.